In this video, I'm going to show you step by step just how you create a recipe ebook like the one you're seeing on screen now using the software Canva. I'll give you as many Canva tips as I can along the way so that you'll be able to recreate not just this sort of recipe book, but pretty much any sort of ebook you'd like to create. And I'll give you some smart Canva workflow tips so that you can save as much time as possible and so that you can create a system that's repeatable in the future should you ever want to create more ebooks. And I think this is very useful skill because ebooks like the one we're going to create can be used as free giveaways to grow your email list or just as a way to provide additional value to your existing audience. Okay, so here I am on the Canva home screen. Now I'm gonna assume that you probably do have some knowledge with Canva. However, if you don't, in the uh, description down below, I will post a link to how to sign up for a free account. It's super easy, you just go to canva.com. There are multiple ways to sign up and you can start with a free account. So I'll put that link below. And then once you log in, you'll end up on a home screen that looks uh, something like this one. And this is a free account right here. I also have a pro account, but I wanted to do this on a free account just to show you that everything we're gonna do today can be done with a free account. Okay, so here we are in the home screen. Uh, and you probably know the Canva home screen, this is where you launch your different design types. So if you wanted to create something for Facebook, you could search and find templates for creating a Facebook post or a Facebook cover. Same thing if you were building something for Instagram. So where do we wanna start in terms of what template we're gonna use when we're creating a recipe book? Because this is something we could do from scratch, totally from scratch. And of course we are gonna be using our own pictures and some of our own assets in this. But it is still a good practice if you can save time by finding a good starting point, then yes, absolutely save time. I mean, that is one of the things we love about Canva. It has lots of great starting points, so we don't have to start with that dreaded blank page. We can usually find a good starting point and we can save time. So what is going to be our starting point for this project? Well, there are lots of different template options in Canva, and we could search along down here and try to find something, or we could go under this templates tab, but you can also just search right up here. Now, might be tempted to type in ebook, and if we start to come up uh, with ebook, uh, start to type in, it's gonna start to show us results here. Now, if you're not seeing anything, make sure you're on this templates tab, because if you are clicked over on projects and not seeing anything, uh, that's because projects means it's searching your content, content you've created, so it's looking for a file you've saved with the term ebook, in it uh, we want to be under templates because now it's looking in all those pre-made canva templates that we can use as starting points so i see a bunch of options here but if i've actually found for creating ebooks at least if i'm doing a recipe book uh, i like to search and i would like to search for magazine and if i do magazine here then i find some of these magazine templates actually make a better starting point because I know there are a lot of food related magazines that are gonna give us a good starting point for this recipe book. So you're always thinking about what are you creating and what is gonna make a good starting point for what you're creating. Now, the one caveat I'll say about this is if you do wanna publish something to Amazon KDP, another platform, or if you're doing something for print, then there may be specific size requirements that you have to be matching, and then you may need to come to create a design and you may wanna create a custom size. So right here you have this custom size option, and if you do that, and then that platform is gonna tell you exactly what height and width you need to have. But for us, we're creating something that is gonna be a PDF, and so for PDF, this magazine format is gonna be fine. Now, I could look for a blank one here, but I could click on any of these, and I'll just go ahead and click customize this template. But if we opened a blank magazine template, that'd be totally fine too, because what I'm gonna do is just get rid of all this. So I'm just gonna hit Control A and delete all that, just so we have a blank page. And when you have a blank page in Canva, it does have a background color. So if we wanna change this, I can just click right on the black background, because I just want this to be a white background to start with. Okay, so we're in here, we have a blank page. Uh, if I'm starting with a blank page, why did I even choose a magazine template? Well, let me show you. So let me go back to that home screen for a second. And this time I will type in ebook. And so I'm going to type in ebook and I'm just going to choose ebook now and bring up an ebook. And again, I can choose a, a blank one. Sometimes you'll see a blank one. But I'll choose any of these. I'll do customize them this template. Sure. We'll go ahead and we're going to open this ebook format. And once again, I'll hit control A and I'll just delete everything on the page. And we see it gave us multiple pages here. So let me just throw these extra pages in the trash for the moment. Again, it's given us a full ebook format. So actually, uh, when we have this many pages, you can also go under this grid view here and you can shift click all these pages. And so if I shift click all these pages, I can throw them all out at once. And we just have that one uh, page 
each left now. And again, just use this three squares at the bottom to go back and forth and grid view. I'll talk about that a little bit more later in this tutorial because that is helpful to know. You can switch between that grid view and this full screen view. Okay, so here I am. So I have this one open here and this is my ebook and this is the magazine format. So why did I choose this magazine format instead of this ebook format? Well, in each of these, we want to find a template that's a good starting point. Now, from the home screen, you can search templates on the home screen, but I don't worry about that so much because with all the options, even once you're in this project interface, you have under this design tab, the ability to search for templates, right? So I can come in here and I can search and I'm under ebook now. And so if I type food or recipe, let me type recipe. Uh, under this thing, I'm going to start to see some options that look like they make a little bit of sense. Like here's one that's healthy recipes, but that's just really this design here. And so if you click on it, it's this is a pro one here, so I can't use this one. Again, remember I mentioned that we're in under a free account. So there are some ones here that are pro ones. Now I'll talk about how even when you have a free account, seeing this pro icon isn't necessarily a stopping point. I'll talk about what it means. I'll talk about ways you can work around it or things you need to consider. But first, let's just go down through here. So we have some options here. Here's one that's not pro, and it does have multiple pages. But most of these in here don't have multiple pages, and I'm just seeing a limited number of options. Now, here's one here. This might make a good cover for a food recipe book, but there weren't interior pages. This is just the main page. Now, just to contrast that, I'll come back up here under design mode just for a second. We'll back out here so we can see these other options. Just to contrast that, we see the options we're getting here. They're sort of in the right ballpark, but not quite what I want. Now let's go over to this magazine format. If I type the exact same keyword that we typed over in that ebook, but now I'm typing recipe here, now suddenly this is more in the ballpark. Suddenly we're seeing a lot more options that seem like they're gonna have you know recipes or be recipe books. Like if I click on this one here, we see that it actually has three pages. And so if I click plus here, I can add this page. I can add a new page, I can add this inside page, I can add another page, I can add this page. So we have multiple options and we can see this is getting more towards what we want here because this would make sort of maybe the front page of your ebook. Then we have sort of a table of contents and then we have another page that looks like it, it could be uh, fold with so it had either text about the recipe or the recipe itself. So this is getting closer to what I want. Now I just learned this through experience and so sometimes it is going to take a little experience just to figure for you to figure out what the right starting point is. So you make your best guess at to start with. So maybe you do start with that ebook sometimes, but then just through experience I know when creating a recipe book, I know that this am the this magazine format uh, makes a better starting point because I am going to find better templates that give me better starting points. Now, let me back out for a second and this one here so this one here, you notice when it came in that I do have some ones in here, some images that have this Canva watermark. Well, why am I seeing this Canva watermark? Well, this is because this particular image is a pro element. When you have a pro account in Canva, you have access to more stock images, more stock video, more templates. And some of these uh, stock images uh, that we're seeing in here are pro elements. So what happens when I have this and I go to download it? So let me just come sh under share option here. I'm gonna click download. We'll do PDF here, PDF for print. We'll go ahead and click download. Uh, and then it's gonna say try Canva Pro for free because it's telling me that there are two, uh, two premium elements here. So it's telling me if I wanna download this because it has pro elements, I can go to a free pro trial and then I'll have access to this. Or if I click these three dots here, I can purchase this pro content for $2. So because there are two images in here, basically what it comes down to usually is it's going to cost you a dollar to use that pro element. And that's one of the reasons why if you do use a Canva, if you do use Canva a ton and you start to really make, make use of all the stock assets that they have, it may be worth you upgrading to that pro account. Now, on the other hand, if you're almost always bringing your own content in here, then maybe, maybe you can get away with the free account. It's just gonna take a little experience on your end to know whether the free account or the pro account is right for you. However, these watermarks at this point for this design, 
do not have to be a stopping point for us because what's going to happen with this design? Well, we're going to have our own food photography that we're uploading. We're going to be using our own assets. So I'm not going to try to download something with these watermarks images. What we're going to do is we're going to come into this template. We're going to edit this template and we're going to bring in our own content. So let's talk about that now. Let's talk about how we start to customize once we find a good starting point. So let's go back over here and let's change this keyword from recipe to food just so we get some slightly different results. So food, because uh, for any of these, if I go on any of these and I click the three dots here, you can see that they each actually have these keywords associated with them. And so when we do a search up here, it's basically based on the keywords that we're searching for. It's pulling up results. results. And so it's a good thing to try a couple different keywords that are close to what you want, just so you do get a variety of results here. You're going to have some overlap sometimes, of course, but then you do get some unique results. Okay, the other thing to keep in mind here is when we're creating these pages, uh, right now at this point, I'm just pulling out pages that might work for the type of content we want within our final product. And also keep in mind that you can create totally custom pages. You can design things from scratch if you need to, but we're looking for things that will save us time. So obviously if we know we want a table of contents page in our book, then we're gonna look for table of content options over here. So what I wanna do is just spend a little bit more time just going through a couple of these and getting a few more pages out here. Now, am I gonna use all these pages? No, not necessarily, but I'm just going through the process. I want you to understand this process. So let me just come through here and let me look through a couple more of these. So again, if you just hold your cursor over it and, and just wait for a second, it'll start to go through the pages, but you can also click on it and it'll get into the pages this way. It'll show you the pages. And then of course you can use this back arrow to get back out. So let me go down. Let's check this one out. This one kind of has some interesting options and here's the table of contents page. So let me go down here. And if I just add this now, what it's going to do is replace this page. Let me just show you if I do this right now, it's going to replace the existing page. So I'm going to use control Z on my keyboard to undo that. Cause I actually want to keep this page. I want to add a new page. So make sure you add a new page if you want to add a new page in. So here's another option. We'll add that cover too, and then we'll add this page here, and then we'll add this page here, because I could actually see the four pages that I just added being all the pages we potentially need because we have what could be a starter page for the uh, sort of cover of the magazine. Then we'd have one here that could be a blurb about the recipe, or we can modify this so it actually had the recipe itself. Uh, then we have an end page here, and I think I added a table contents page. Yeah, and there's the table contents page. So that's potentially one, one that we would use. Uh, and then here's another option as well, this page here. So I could apply that other page as well. So again, you're just coming in here and you're applying pages that you think might work. Now, the good thing about staying all within one design is that these designs here clearly have been designed so they have cohesive elements, right? So that the fonts match up, so that the styling matches up. If we go and we use one of these pages like here, and then one of those first options we use from this other ones, then suddenly we're gonna have to worry about unifying the fonts so that we have a cohesive design. So you can come in here and choose different starter pages from a variety of different starter assets. But if you do that, then keep in mind that you may have to come in there and make more adjustments in terms of coming up with a cohesive final design, okay? So I could go down and I could uh, add more pages, but I just wanted to give you the idea of you're going through here, you're searching, you're finding some options. Now, once we have some options now, we want to start to edit it down to just the pages we think we're gonna end up using, and then we wanna get rid of the extra pages. Now, you can keep some variety in here in your template because it is possible to just use this as a template and then spawn some pages from this template, which I'm gonna show you how to do. So it's okay if you have some variety, but we don't wanna keep pages that we know we're not gonna use. So I'm actually gonna come up here and I think I'm gonna throw away this one because I don't think I'm gonna use these first ones. So actually, let me throw up the way these three right here, and I'm gonna keep these five pages here as potential pages that I might use in their design, okay? So I have five pages, but what I wanna do now is I wanna come in here and I wanna start to make edits to personalize this so it's gonna make more sense for my brand, for my final product. 
But the first thing I might do is I might jump back to this grid view real quick and just today stay organized. Let me reorder these pages and you can just click on a page and sort of drag it and move it around. So I want to move this one to the front because that's going to be the cover page. Then I want the table of contents page. And then I guess this would be an interior page. This would be an interior page. Uh, also this one here and then this so you got to drag and wait until you see that blue line. There we go. And then this page would maybe be like a thank you page for the end of the book. So I think that's the order I want. And now I'll jump back to this view here. And now where do we go from here? Well, at this point, I might start wanting to have my own images uh, as I work through some of these designs. Now, I'm not creating the whole book now because I'm going to have some repetitive content. I'm going to have a lot of different recipe pages. And I don't want to create all of those at once. I sort of want to finalize my template first. And then from there, I'll go to create all my pages. But as I'm finalizing the template pages and these lo the look of my design, this is where I might want to have some of my own images that I'm going to be using in the design to test out. So now would be a good time to import any images, any assets that you envision yourself using in this ebook. You can do that by coming over to the Uploads tab. And when you're, once you're under Uploads here, you can click Uploads Files. And then you can navigate to the folder you want. And so this is my folder with my dessert images. So I could select all these and click open. Now I just want to show you that you also can just drag images directly into Canva here. And you don't even actually have to be on these, uh, this uploads tab. So let me just put it on the design tab and let me just show you an example here. So I'm going to drag my Windows Explorer uh, screen, which is on my second monitor here, just over so you can see it. And so if I were to go on this screen and I were to sort of use Windows Explorer to navigate to the images I want, I could select them all and I can drag them over here and you'll notice that as soon as I bring them over to Canva I don't even have to be on that designs tab the uploads tab it's automatically going to recognize that I want to upload them so as soon as I release my mouse button boom it's going to start to upload all of those images into Canva so this is a really quick way just to save some time all you have to do is drag your images into Canva drop them on the Canva screen they're going to upload they're going to be under your uploads uh, in Canva now I don't like to just keep things just under this uploads tab I find that it's very, very helpful and very important in your Canva workflow if you want to save time in the future and while working on projects. One of the things you need to do is you need to save things off into folders. Now, it used to be with the free account, you only got two folders, but now even under the free Canva account, you get unlimited folders. And this is something you definitely want to take advantage of. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to check all these images that we just uploaded. So I'm going to check them all real quick. Just hit the little check box in the upper left there. And once you have them all selected, you can see I have 14 images selected. I can move them to a folder. So you have this move to folder option on the bottom. I'm going to click move to folder and then I can choose a folder that already exists or you can create a new folder. So let's create a new folder and let's call this dessert book uh, images. Uh, whatever is appropriate. We'll just call it dessert book and we'll go ahead and add to folder. And what it's doing now is it's creating the folder dessert book for me under my project. Uh, and now it's going to be where all my images are stored. So let me just delete this one that accidentally got added to the project. And now show you if you want to get to those images and have them so you can quickly use them in this project, what you're going to do now is you're going to come under here. You're going to come under the projects tab. Under the projects tab, you have this folders option. And under the folders, you can look and you can define that dessert book uh, thing. If you don't see it, you can search here for dessert book, but I see it right here. So I can click on that. Now suddenly I have all of these images right here where now I can immediately drag these over and use them in this design okay so that's just an important feature uh, in Canva the ability to stay organized is you have unlimited folders and you can when you import stuff into Canva you can immediately organize it into folders and it is a very good idea in terms of your workflow believe you me I know sometimes you just want to get right into your work but if you spend just a couple seconds organizing things it will pay off for you because now we have it all organized now as we actually work on this project we're not going to have to fumble around on the uploads tab if we come back to this later we're going to know exactly where it is so do yourself a favor when you upload things immediately organize it appropriately into a folder now a couple other things worth mentioning now that we navigated to this folder you notice that we now see the folder right here dessert book so by default in canva on your left navigation here by default here in July of 2023 when I'm recording this, uh, you're always going to see down through this apps tab. But then you'll notice these other options underneath here. Suddenly these other options are ones you can X out and get rid of. And what Canva does is by default, 
the most recent folders you've used, the most recent tools you've used, they're going to show up here on the bottom. Now we can get rid of this dessert book and we're not going to see it anymore, but then suddenly if we were to come back again under that projects tab and we again navigate it to here. So let me just back out of here because I think we need to actually go there again. So let's go to again, so folders, and let's go once again to that dessert book and see there it is now back in our navigation. So don't let that throw you off. Just know that your most recent items are going to show up here in your navigation. So you can always get to any folder by going under this projects tab. Uh, and then going under folders like we did, finding the folder you want to work within, but then also your most recent folders, most recent tools you've used, they're going to show up here in this navigation, just giving you a very quick way to get back to things. Now, one more thing I want to show you real quickly. I showed you a couple of different ways to upload things to Canva. There actually is another way of uploading something to Canva that maybe you might find useful as well, especially if you're a blogger and you're going to be pulling images directly from your blog. So let me once again drag another browser window open. And so what I'm doing now is I'm dragging over another browser window. And this is, oh, let me try that again. I lost it for a second. So let me drag that over so you can see it uh, in screen here. So this is another browser window. And in this browser window, I have a recipe open. So this is a food blog my wife and I used to run. Uh, so another way that you can do this is you can actually drag an image directly from a blog post and you can drag it directly over to Canva. So let's say I wanted to use this this uh, image here in this recipe book. Well, I could drag it over and you'll notice once again, once I release it, it's going to automatically be uploaded in Canva. And so just like that, really quickly, I could bring something in really quickly. I could incorporate something into my design. So another thing that might be helpful to you, I mention it because of that. Just keep in mind, a lot of times your files are going to be compressed on your blog, right? Because you want them to load faster. And so they may not be the highest quality images. So if you're using them full screen, full page, you're just going to have to eyeball it. You're going to have to make sure that the resolution, the quality is good enough for that final output that you want. Okay. So that's something to be aware of, but it is another way that potentially you can bring images over here into Canva, especially if you're using them just for a thumbnail like this, then chances are the resolution is going to be fine. And it might be a very quick way because you also might be looking at your recipe instructions to bring those over, bring the text over, which we'll talk about in a minute. It. So it's just a quick way to visit a blog post and very quickly bring things over here into Canva. Okay, so let's get back into updating these pages so they really make a good template so we can use it for future versions of this and so we can use it to spawn new pages. Okay, so the first thing is you've noticed a couple times I've just been dragging and dropping things in and having the picture snap and replace the pictures that were already in this template. So you probably understand what's going on there, but in case you don't, let me just mention this. So the first thing I'm going to do is this, this image here on this sort of title page, I'm going to right click and we'll see we have this detach image from background. And so if I remove that, I'll hit the delete key. Now it looks like everything's gone. Well, the text is actually still there. It's just white text and we're not seeing it because of the background color here. So if I were to go up here and click and choose a different background color, so let's just choose any color, we'll see that that other stuff is still, still there. So the background of any Canva page is the backmost layer in your design. And you actually can go under position here. And now in Canva, there's actually a layers menu. And so you can see all the layers in your design. This one with this symbol here, this is the background layer. It is always the backmost layer of your design. And it also always behaves like a frame, meaning that you can drag images in and you can replace the background. So if I come under my dessert book now and I drag any of these images over the background, we'll see that I can have them snap and I can have them replace the current background image. You just have to be right over top. Now I lost that one, let me try that again. But if you drag stuff over, as soon as you get over to top, usually it's gonna snap and you can replace the background, okay? This would be a good way of coming in and testing out what might make a good cover photo. Now, once again, you might not always use the same cover photo because we might want to design multiple ebooks. So you're both designing for what you're going to do right now, but then we're also thinking about something that's going to be reusable. So we also want to just have a good template. Okay. So another thing you can do is use frames. So frames work a lot like the background image in terms of being able to drag an image over and have the image take the space, except frames can be different sizes. So if I come down to this image right here and I right click, we'll see I have that same attached image now. 
Uh, but when I get rid of that image, we'll see that there's just a frame behind it. Now you probably understand about this, but if you don't, let's just have a really quick tutorial. So if you go under your elements tab in Canva, you're going to see all sorts of different elements. If you come down far enough, you're going to see grids and frames. So if I go under here, under the see all option under frames, then we're going to see lots of options, circular frames, frames with tears, all kinds of different frames. So let's actually just navigate down real quick to the bottom and create a blank page here. And I'll just add a couple on here. So there's a circular frame. There's one that has a rip. Uh, and then let me just back out of frames for a second and let me just show you that we also have that grids option. So if we scroll down here, we have frames and grids. I will add uh, this single grid because this single grid is the one I use most. Now the big difference between frames and grids, uh, frames you get those weird shapes. Uh, with grids, it's usually uh, rectangles. Uh, and you either get rows and columns or you can get, use this single single frame here or single grid I should say but the grid has these resized handles on the side so I can really make this any size I want in terms of being a rectangle so I can drag that down and then you'll notice with frames here you can sort of scale them but the proportions sort of vertical and horizontal are sort of locked in so you can resize like this but you do not have the side handles like you do with the grid but mostly they work the same way in that once you have one of them on screen, it's basically a placeholder. And then when you add any visual content, any picture, you drag it over top, it is going to fill the area of that grid or that frame. Now, once you have something within a grid or frame, you can still resize it and the content's gonna resize with it. Uh, you can also resize what shows within the frame. So if I double click on a frame, I could also click once on the image and then go up to the crop option. Same thing as double clicking into an image and then you suddenly can resize something. You can position what's showing and so then suddenly you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can do all sorts of things. Same thing down here. If I come down here and let's first say I wanted to make this bigger this way, but then I wanted to change what was showing in here. I could double click into the frame and I could size up or down. Of course, you can't make it smaller than the frame itself. It's got to at least reach the bounds of the frame. But then within that, you could come in here and you could reposition. Then anytime you click out, it's going to finish and finalize the crop. And that's going to fit within the area of your frame. Okay, so these are grids and frames. And it is a lot of good times, a good idea to use frames or grids as placeholders for the visual content you're going to have. Now, let me show you one more thing. Let me just delete these all. So I'm just going to select everything, hit the delete button. I'm just going to drag a picture onto screen. Actually, let me just delete that. I'll just click it once, picture on screen. So anytime you click one of your images once, it's just going to pop on screen. Now, when I put this on the screen, there was no frame here, right? So what's going to happen if I drag something over the top of this image? You might think nothing. However, watch what happens if I drag something over top. A picture actually replaces the picture. And let's say I crop this first and crop this way down, right? And then I drag another pic picture in. Same thing. So even though you don't have a frame, when you have a picture on screen and you drag another picture over top, it's automatically going to act like a frame acts and that one picture is going to replace that other picture. OK, so let me delete that and we'll scroll back. And so the reason why I mention all of this is because when you're designing a template, it's really up to you whether you want to just have this default background frame look or whether you want to actually have a picture. Right. It's up to you whether you want to have a picture as a placeholder, whether you want to have a placeholder as a placeholder. They're both going to work functionally the same way in terms of being able to grab another graphic quickly and bring it over top and populate that. So all you're really concerned with is the size and shape within your design. You don't have to worry as much about whether it's an image, whether it's a frame. You just have to understand the functionality that exists there, the ability to very quickly drag in another image. And then the second part of the, that is just be aware that you can resize grids or frames, right? So you can resize. And the reason why these are all sizing, resizing together is because it looks like these are all grouped together. Or actually, I think maybe what we have here is we might have a actual grid. So if I were to go ahead and click up on the spacing option here, I'll see that it says grid spacing. And with grids, when you have grids that are sort of multiple columns or multiple rows, then you actually have this grid spacing where you can come in and it will automatically allow you to do this. You sort of drag this slider and adjust the spacing between the grid cells. You can get rid of it completely 
or you can have whatever amount you want. So that was this. The first clue is just that these were grouped together, but there wasn't an ungroup option. If these were actually grouped together, you can group multiple elements. Let me just add two things to screen real quick here. You probably know this, but you can group elements together. Let me make this smaller just so we're getting cluttered on the page here. But let me just make these smaller here just so we can see them down on the bottom of the screen here. If I clicked one and then the other, and then you see with multiple things selected, you can group them. And then when you have them grouped, you can move them around. But then also when you select them again, you'll see that ungroup option and you can ungroup and then now you can select them one at a time again. So that's just grouping, ungrouping. Uh, but again, you also have the ability to add grids, which are automatically frames that are grouped together. And then you have that spacing option. So again, if I wanted to find that and add that, let me just come back under the elements tab. Remember, I have these grids option. We look at the single grid, but if I come in here, let's just look at a, a, um, another grid. Let's put it on an empty page. Here's one that's multiple columns. So if I wanted to click on that, I could resize that, but it's a three column grid. And because it's a three column grid, I come in here and I can change the spacing, right? But there's no way to ungroup that. They're always going to be grouped together, okay? So grids and frames, don't let them confuse you. It's really not that complicated. You just got to play around a little bit and you will get used to it. Let's move forward now with our design. So I'm going to scroll back up to this cover page. Uh, now, if you do want to name your pages, you can name the pages if that's helpful to you. So I could call this cover page or title page or whatever. You don't have to name your pages, but if you want to, if that's gonna be something that's helpful for you, uh, you can. And there actually is a search feature in Canva where if you search and return some of your own results, it will sometimes pick up page keywords and not just project keywords. So if you're searching for a specific page within a project, then it is helpful to have these uh, page titles, but not always, so that's really up to you. Uh, so for this page here, I think for this part of the process, I wanna get rid of the image. I don't wanna have the image yet. Let me just give this a sort of middle gray color. So I'm just gonna come in here and just make it some sort of color, gray color for now, uh, just so it's not a distraction as I'm designing here. Now, this is where you're coming in and you're starting to figure out what fonts, what positioning, or what le what you want your layout to be of your design. And so, for example, this font, font here is this Playfair display. And if I click through, I can see that that's being used at a couple couple different places throughout this design. Uh, so it's good to have that cohesive uh, you know, use of fonts throughout your design. However, when you first bring in uh, something from a Canva template, it's not necessarily gonna be the font you want to use. Maybe you like it and you do wanna use it, but there's also a pretty good chance you're gonna to wanna to come in there and you're gonna change these to your brand fonts or just whatever fonts you wanna use for this project. So all you have to do is click on the uh, text in question and you can come under your text tab and then you have a lot of different options under here uh, you have your default styles and if you are a pro user you have the ability to add multiple brand kits and so you may have some styling uh, font stylings that you've already saved but you can also just come up here and search under this box here and there are lots and lots of fonts and of course the ones with the crown icon are going to be those pro fonts but there are going to be lots of free options as well so i'm just going to search for open sans and i'm going to use this open sans font and then I just have to decide, uh, do I like this here? Do I want to use it bold? I think I just want it regular. So open sans, and then I think for this, uh, oops, hold, hold up, I, I made a mistake. Now it's gonna happen real time, I made a mistake. Let me just go back a step or two here. So uh, if you ever make a mistake, you can hit Control Z on your keyboard to step backwards. So I'm stepping backwards through commands using that Control Z on my keyboard. That's on P PC, on Windows. If you're on Mac, it would be Command C on your keyboard or there's also this undo option up here. So just to step backwards to where we have this Playfair font, because remember, I mentioned this Playfair font is being used throughout our design, and we want to change all instances of that Playfair font to that Open Sans. So let me come down to Open Sans now, and then whenever you change a font, when I just make the change, I just made the selection, you'll notice down here, Playfair Display to Open Sans is asking me, do I want to change all? Well, yes. Yes, I want to change all. So if I click this button now, that is very helpful because now you'll notice that all of these other options where we had Playfair, these are all open sans, sans font as well. So that's just a very helpful way when you're coming in and you're updating a template that has multiple pages, a theme that has multiple pages, and you have lots of instances of the same font, you can change them all quickly. The same thing applies when you have the same color throughout a design. You can change it all quickly. You'll get that same sort of button that we saw at the bottom. So these are just some little helpful tricks that can save you a lot of time when you're designing. Now I wanna simplify this. I don't need all this text. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this at the top. I think I'm gonna get rid of this there. Of course, you can add in whatever copy is gonna make sense for you. But I think what I'll put in here is I'll put in the blog name for us here. 
So you would put whatever makes sense for you. And so I also might change the font of this. And so this is this glacial indifference. I'm gonna change this to Cooper Hewitt. So let me do a search for Cooper Hewitt. There's that. And then once again, when I do that, I'm gonna once again do the change all. So I'm gonna change all. I don't want it to be bolded. So I'm gonna check that option there. And so you'll notice that uh, once again, all throughout here, everything was changed to this Cooper Hewitt. Uh, so again, that change all really saved me some time, okay? So then let me come in here and change the title. Now, I might be creating a dessert book now, but since I am gonna maybe do something different, another recipe book in future, I would sometimes give this a generic name, so just something like recipe book title. And then of course, uh, I gotta work on my spacing here and my sizing. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna come over my font size, I'm just gonna size it down a little bit. Uh, I think it's fine if it spans two lines. So then what I'm gonna do is drag this down, I'll drag this up again. Let's get it snapped to the center. Let's drag this right below this. And so you can also always group fonts together or different uh, text together. So if I get it like that, and I wanted to grab both of those, I could group these. And then when they're grouped together, if I ever were to come in here and expand this to a third line, then that other line is gonna expand with it because I have these text uh, box groups together. So let me hit Control Z just to get like that. But just grouping things like that, these are some simple things you can do just to save yourself time in the future. So if you ever create another version and go to another line, you know, it's gonna expand. So simple things, but things that save you time. Another simple thing that I do sometimes that can save me time is I'm gonna duplicate this page. I often like to have a light and dark text version of a page. So I come in here now, I might change this to black. Uh, then I'll change this color here, this font here, to maybe not quite fully black, but like sort of a dark gray. Uh, and then this is my light version here, and this one at the bottom here. Let's change this one from white to, again, mostly white, but a little bit of gray, just to give a little contrast between... Uh, the main title and the sub the subheading, main heading and the subheading. Okay, so that would be fine for my cover pages. Again, if you want more copy, you can add more copy. And the reason why I do simple changes like this is when I finally get to adding something to this and testing it as I'm using a template, I might be very quickly uh, bringing stuff over testing it in both versions to see how it looks with the bright title, see how it looks with the dark title, deciding whether I need to do something like bring a rectangle in and add behind. And as I'm doing stuff like this, the more things I can have built out ahead of time. Uh, so I could also have another version, for example, if I just duplicate this again, and then I get rid of this rectangle, which I just dragged out on screen, then suddenly I have a version that has a rectangle, I have a version that doesn't. And it just means when I'm actually designing, I can really quickly drag an image in, test the multiple versions of the page, decide which one I wanna use, and then throw out the other ones, right? I'm doing work now to save time later, okay? So it really comes down to you deciding whether you're gonna save enough time later to make it worth doing the work now. But if you do 10 minutes now, that's gonna save you 30 minutes later, then absolutely it's worth it, right? So you just get a feel for when it's good to build out some different variations in your template like this. Uh, and then that's just something you can keep in mind going forward. Now this one here, I obviously would have to slide my one title down a little bit if I was using this rectangle. So let me just ungroup this for a second. Let me drag that down a little farther. And then I could come in here and I could group these three elements uh, together again, but actually I might wanna be careful about how I do this because there's actually an interesting way that uh, rectangles and shapes will interact with your text when it's grouped together. So let me just show you, I could group it right now. If I group it right now and then I come in here to add another line to this, so let me just click here and hit enter. You'll notice that my my wife can cook text, this text here is no longer expanding with uh, my above text, okay? So let me just hit Control Z. Let me ungroup this whole thing. Uh, what I wanna actually do is I actually wanna have both of these text uh, items contained within the bounds of this rectangle. Because let me show you what happens when I do that. So what I'm gonna do is just resize things here a little bit, make sure, size this down slightly, make sure that I have both it and the text below within the bounds of this rectangle. So you'll notice that the blue bounding box is within the brown rectangle here. The same for this bounding box here. Now suddenly if I select the whole thing now, and now I group it together, watch what happens now if I come in here and I add another line to this. Do you notice how both the My Wife Can Cook text here and also the rectangle itself expands? So that's an interesting feature here. The same thing if I delete here, suddenly the rectangle 
is expanding and contrast, contracting uh, based on the size of my titles. So again, when you're building out templates, it's another thing that's helpful to know, just all the little quirks of Canva, a rectangle that's grouped with text. If that text, the bounding box of that text, is within the bounds of the rectangle, the bounds of the shape, then that shape will expand as the text expands to new lines or as the text contracts to uh, fewer lines, okay? Just another little tip. Okay, so let's move on to some of the other pages in our design. So I'm going to scroll down here uh, to this page, the table contents page. Now, uh, again, what, wherever you think you're going to need images, wherever you think you're going to want text, uh, you can go ahead and you can sort of lay out placeholders right now. Now, right now, this is positioned, so this block is sort of centered uh, among all these blocks here. Let me ungroup this uh, for a second. And you have to think about whether you want to group things or not group things. Uh, so maybe I'm thinking I might have a little bit more than three recipes uh, per page here. In terms of the table contents, maybe I want as many as six. So I could Alt-click to copy this. I could come up here and select these elements and Alt-click to copy this. Now, uh, since I want to space these sort of blocks evenly, I might want to group the block. So I could group that block. I could group these blocks. I'm just going to group each of these blocks real quickly. So group, 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 and one more, and group. And the reason why I was uh, blocking all these groups, because now these are sort of cohesive elements. And now if I want to space all of these, let's just say, for example, you wanted to space this. So this lined up with the bottom, this lined up with the top. And then I could position those two outer elements and then if I select all those elements, now if I come to my position menu under here and I come under this range, a range option, I could even things out vertically. Uh, I could also make sure that they align the left edges. And then very easily like that, I have things spaced nice and even. Now, there are some things to consider here because if I was doing it this way, this spacing would only maintain if my text was exactly the same in terms of the number of lines here. So it may make more sense to have things center aligned. And what I mean by that is let's take some of the space out of this. So let's move this one up a fair amount. Let's move this one down a fair amount. Again, this is gonna be this, this is gonna be up. And so now if I just worry about the top and the bottom two, when you use these spacing options, it's gonna leave the top where the top is, it's gonna leave the bottom where the bottom is and everything else you can space out vertically in between. So position, uh, range, vertically, tidy up, right? Make sure that the left edges are aligned. So you can use all these alignment options. Uh, and then if I do it this way, then now I have room if things, if I want things to expand out. And so if I did it this way and then I were to select everything here and I was to group everything, then suddenly when all of these are grouped, suddenly if I come in here and somebody adds a line, the line goes to the bottom here, right? And if I add another line, the line goes to the bottom. Well, this isn't exactly what I want to have happen because if I want to keep this block center aligned in the page, then ideally I'd have the spacing whenever I do a new line be half on the bottom and half of the top so everything stays spaced in relation to the center of the page. Well, there is actually a way to do this. So let me just delete this line and delete this line. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a selection. I'm gonna make sure I drag that selection around this entire block just to make sure the entire block is selected. And then I'm gonna come up here under this icon. This is the spacing option. So if I go under the spacing menu, suddenly you'll notice this anchor text box option at the bottom. And these are showing you where the anchor point. Right now it's set so everything is anchored to the top. If I go to the far right, then everything's anchored at the bottom. What we want is everything to be anchored in the center. This is actually this option here. And so when I turn on this option, watch what happens now when I come in here and I start to add new lines. You notice now that spacing is being added both at the top and the bottom. So we are maintaining this equal spacing in terms of all of this entire block being aligned up with the center of the page. So that might be something I wanna do in my design. Uh, so you can think about these things when you're designing your pages. The one thing I will just say to you is that 
do things that seem to make sense that are going to make it so your design is more flexible as you go forward but don't get totally carried in locking in the final exact spacing of your design of everything because you are going to have some variable content right when you have text blocks some might be bigger than others so think about roughly what you want things to be and just be prepared to make those adjustments when you go forward into your final version so i think all i actually want to do from now is i want to come in here and i'm going to change this to recipe title uh, and so if I think about the size of my title, let me just start putting some more characters. I realized that I probably want this to be on one line, but I realized that some of my recipe titles might be a little bit bigger. Uh, so maybe I want to size down my font a little bit here. So maybe I'll go down to a 14 point font just so I have a little bit more room. So I'll go ahead and delete that. But I changed it down just to 14 point font just so that there's a little bit more room here. And then this is going to be my description. I don't need all these extra lines in here. So first of all, let me select all of this. Let's ungroup all of this just so I can come in here a little bit more easily and execute, uh, excuse me, and edit these individual elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And you can see what happened there is I still have that anchor box turned on. It made sense before now, but now when I'm individually editing things, it does not really make sense. So let me just select all this real quick now. When I'm individually element, uh, editing things, I want it to be anchored at the top. So I'll go ahead and change that back and then come back out of here. And this here is going to be a brief description of the recipe maybe it goes for two or three lines at most and i'll just leave it at two lines for now and i've got an extra character in there i'll take it again but again this is all just placeholder text i'll come make sure i like the spacing and the alignment and then once i have one block the way i like it i would just go ahead and i will copy or excuse me, select all of it. I will group that. Now let me just get rid of the rest of these because what I'm going to do is just take my placeholder block and drag out two, three, four, five, six. And again, to do that, I was just clicking on one block. Then I hold down the Alt, that's Alt on the PC, Option on Windows. So I hold down that key as I drag out with my mouse and that just drags out a copy. You could also click on something and just you know, right click and then copy. But I like using those keyboard shortcuts when they save time. And then once I have all of these, uh, then maybe I'll come in here and work on the spacing a little bit. So let's move it so they're a little bit tighter together. So I'm gonna slide this one up. I'll select everything then and we'll come under the position menu and I will grab the position uh, thing, go under the arrange, and we'll just space it all vertically like that. And I think I will center align things, but I'm not even gonna worry about those final spacing options that I talked about because I can come in here, I can make adjustments later in my final version. Again, I wanna do things now that are gonna save me time, but if I know I'm gonna have to do tweaking later, it's not something I need to worry about. Okay, so let's move on and take a look at our other pages. So I'm gonna scroll down to this next page. Now this page I envision maybe being just a page where you, you have an image of the recipe and maybe just a description of your recipe. So there's some things here I can probably get rid of. So I'll get rid of that. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And this is just gonna be, again, the recipe title. Uh, and again, like you wanna think about things like text size here. So maybe I might make this a little smaller. So right now this is, 66 let's maybe lower this down to 48 point uh, just so we have a little bit more space there and again you can always make adjustments in your final version but right now i'm just thinking about what what's probably going to work for most cases and then here if this is just going to be a description uh, i could put some sort of placeholder uh, and sometimes you'll see people use some sort of dummy text uh, just to represent that there's going to be text here so if you come to this site lorumipsum.com or if you just type lorum ipsum pretty much in any search browser, you're gonna get these websites that they'll just generate this, this dummy placeholder text. Uh, this isn't an actual language, it's just a made up language. It just gives your eye visually something to take up the space um, and, and represent sort of where content is gonna go. So you can use that or you can type something uh, like I did up here where I just did sort of a placeholder text. So whatever works for you, uh, you can do that. Uh, then at the bottom here, uh, maybe we are going to want page numbers. So let's just go ahead and see. Let's change this font here. Let me just click on that again. And we're going to come in here. We're just going to stick to this uh, two versions of our font here. So this is just going to be a page number at the bottom. So I'm just going to maybe put uh, just number as a placeholder. Uh, we can make that probably slightly bigger. So let's bring it up to 14 point font. We'll make it a little smaller here. 
and then we're going to figure out where we want it positioned maybe here at the bottom of the page here like this lined up with that text now the one thing i'll say about page numbers is so far canva does not have a good auto page numbering feature they don't have any auto page numbering feature i do hope get that they uh come up with something in the future because that would certainly be helpful but for right now just know that at when you create this and we'll go over this as we go uh from generating our template into our final pages you do have to sort of plan out ahead of time your page numbers and it's not going to be something you can easily adjust later um, so I'm just going to keep this uh, pretty simple. Now, if I did want some other sort of uh, footer at the bottom of my page, I could generate a new text uh, box here. So let me just alt drag this one over again. And then I'm going to make this one bigger here. And in here, maybe I'll type something like uh, see more recipes or maybe find more recipes, find more recipes at and then your blog name would go here and then you could take all of this here and if i double click to get into this text box and then use Control a to select everything uh, that would be command a on a mac Control a on windows then you'll see this uh, link option once you have everything selected and this is where you can put in a hyperlink so this is where if you put in your your blog url you could type this in uh, and then that way, when you create a PDF, this is going to carry over to the PDF and you will have this hyperlink in your PDF. And that's just going to make it make it so this is an actual link so that then someone can get to your site. So this is a good way if you give away a freebie, make sure you're linking back to your site. You know, make sure you make it as valuable for yourself as you can uh, so that you can get traffic back to your site. Uh, so again, I'll take all of this here. Let's just nudge it down. A little bit using the arrow keys something like that and then this is a footer that I'm gonna want on all of my interior pages maybe I don't want it on my title page or my table of contents but I'm gonna want it on my other interior pages and I'm gonna have one more recipe so I could take this whole thing here I could group it together if I want I can hit control C and then again if you go to other pages and you paste something it's gonna show up in the same relative position so it's gonna show up at the bottom of my page now right now it's overlapping this image here but I'm gonna make this image smaller on this page so this is still gonna work at the bottom here so what I'm gonna do here is actually just come in here and delete that for the moment and this frame here or is this a grid yeah this is a grid that I can resize so what I'm gonna actually do on this next page is I actually want to make this a lot smaller uh, and you know what on this page if we really want to get um, precise with our alignment or if you want to work on some grid remember you can add page guides so if you come up here and we go under file and we come view settings and we go uh, add guides or show rulers and guides actually if I choose add guides here uh, then we actually have this option to do custom guides here so you could choose 12 columns or six columns but what's usually what you're wanting to, gonna want to do is do custom so I'm gonna come with our custom and basically I want this to be uh, maybe where I'm gonna use two-thirds of the page for one thing and then another third for the other thing uh, so I can actually just come in here and create three columns so let's do three columns uh, I, zero rows is fine or one row I guess uh, and then for these other ones here this is going to control the gap between the columns and I think that's fine here I want to have a little spacing for the column there so if I go ahead and click add guides now now I have the guides on screen and what I'm thinking now is I basically well actually I, I have to decide too whether I want something to come to the very edge let me just go under settings again just to show you a few settings uh, add guide so back under here you could also have uh, margins so if you want margins on the edge of your page I could come up here and I could do something like put a 0.5 in there actually let's use the same 0.35 that's what we have for the other so I just want to show you if you do this now then suddenly you get these margins at the edge of the page and then the column the gap here is sort of the interior in between so I could have this at the edge if I want but I actually think it's fine if I have things going to the edge because I have things going to the edge of this part of my design I have things going to the edge on my cover and now I do have a little uh, edge here so you want to be consistent with your design but that's really sort of a personal decision what I want here I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave the margin off so just so I have a little bit more space I'll go ahead and get rid of the margin uh, so we don't have a margin in here anymore so let's just type in zero click on another box it's gonna apply that change we'll go ahead and click add, add guides uh, and then what I'm gonna do is come back and just resize this image here so that we're just gonna have a small picture of the image here and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna expand this out just so we have a little bit more room uh, we don't need this at the top here this again is going to be the recipe title recipe title 
Uh, on this page, again, it could probably be a little smaller, but I'm going to be consistent maybe and use that 48 point font that I used on the last page. So we'll do that. We'll move it up slightly. Uh, we can decide whether we want this aligned with that or whether we just want it at the top of the page. I think it's going to be okay at the top of the page. Uh, and then here we're going to have, uh, this is where we're going to actually have our ingredients for our recipe. And then we're going to have instructions for our recipe. So let me click on this title here. Now this one is a different font that didn't get changed over to the two fonts we're using. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that to Cooper Hewitt. Uh, and this one here, I can probably leave this as bold since we want it to stand out a little bit more. But we'll call this uh, here uh, Ingredients. And then I'll move it up here and align it. I think I can make it a little bit bigger too. So let's move it up to that 14 point font. Uh, we can make it a little smaller there. And then below, this is where we're actually going to have the actual ingredients. So let me just select all of this. And so again, delete all of that. And then I'm going to use a bulleted list, I think, for my ingredients. And so we'll just do something like ingredient one, ingredient two, and so on. Now, now I can just copy these because these are just this is really just a placeholder at this point. So I don't have to worry about having you know the actual ingredients. This is just a placeholder. So I'm just thinking about. How many ingredients do I think I'll have in the recipe? How much space do I want it to take up? Just as a placeholder here in my design. So something like that is probably fine. Let's nudge that up a little bit. Now I'll just take all of this. I'll copy all of this. Control C, Control V to paste it. Let me drag it down below. And then down below here, this is where I'm going to have my instructions for my uh, recipe. So we'll change this to instructions. And then I'll be able to have my instructions ex expand uh, farther across the page here. However, since I want a little bit more space, maybe I'll take this and maybe I'll have it so my ingredients go into two columns up here, not just one column. Uh, and so then I can probably come in here and get rid of some of these. So let's get rid of those and let's come in here and let's get rid of these. And what I'm just trying to do is just give myself a little bit more space. That way I can bump all of this up the page a little bit. So again, when you're setting up this here, you're just really trying to think about you know, the different cases you're going to have for your final design, the pages you're going to create, and thinking about having the right amount of space for your elements. Obviously, when you're designing a final page, you can make adjustments as you need to, but you're trying to get this set up so that it's in pretty good shape and it's going to work for most cases. And so since you want this to work for real world cases, this is usually the point of the process where I will start to put in some actual real content uh, just to test things out a little bit and make sure I'm, I'm leaving the right amount of space for certain elements. So let me just come up here and I'm going to drag this image over here. Again, I could reposition it if I want, but that looks good. Uh, and then I'm going to actually go to my actual blog page. So you could have things written in a spreadsheet. You could have it written and just copied in. But you could also actually visit your actual blog if you're pulling content from there. So here's this ice cream pie. So I would maybe just grab this recipe title here and then come over onto this page here. And I'm going to paste it in. So Control A, Control V pasting it in and so then I'm starting to see uh, size wise whether I think this is going to be too big now it is taking up a lot of the page here uh, so I would just have to decide you know are all my titles this long or some of them going to be this long uh, I could give myself a little bit more space here because I could expand this out slightly but I don't want to get over into my text over there so really what I'm going to have to do at least for this recipe is I'm going to have to lower down the font size a little bit let's try 42 Let's get the whole thing because I don't think I actually changed it there. But let's select everything. Control A. Let's come in here. Let's choose this 42. Uh, and then maybe it looks a little bit better. I still don't have things going to single line. So maybe that's better. I don't know. So you just have to play around a little bit. So maybe 36 point font is going to work better. Uh, and then I don't actually like seeing these guides when I'm working on my designs here. So you can turn them off and you can't remember the keyboard shortcut. You can come under view settings here and you can see that show guides and rulers that's shift plus R. So if I do shift plus R now, oops, let's try that again. I don't know what I actually hit on my keyboard, but let's try that again. I think I hit control plus R. Let's try doing shift plus R down on this page. Shift plus R, that's how you hide those guides. And now you can see things a little bit more clearly. Uh, and then you can come in here and decide whether you like that better. Uh, and then again, I'm going to keep copying stuff. So I'm just going over just off screen here. I'll pull it on screen for a second. Just copying this here. Control C. Coming back over here. We'll grab all that. Control H, Control V. 
just to paste that in. Uh, and again, uh, it's going to be different for other pages, but I'm getting an idea of some of my content and how well it fits in the page. Uh, so again, let me come back, make sure I'm grabbing another picture of the recipe to slide in here. I can come in here, I can adjust it up slider, slightly. Here's my title, Control A, Control C. Come in here, Control A, Control V. And we decided we're going to go with 36 point font just to give ourselves a little bit more flexibility. And then also at this point, if those lines are too close together, you could go ahead right now and come in here and work on the spacing. So maybe for line spacing, maybe I'd want slightly more line spacing. So let's try 1.1. And I do want to be consistent. So if I did that, I might come back up here and I might change this line spacing to 1.1 just so I have consistency between the two pages there uh, and then ingredients I'm gonna go back again to my recipe page I'll scroll down until I actually have the ingredients here and so we have this ingredients here so let me copy this first set control C let me come back over here and paste this first set in control V uh, and then let me come and grab the second set. So I'm just off screen now, but I'm grabbing the second set. I have two monitors here. That's why only one monitor is being recorded. That's why some of the things I do off screen you can't see. But I just grab that other block there, and then I'll get rid of the extra uh, dots in here. Now, again, how you, when you do this, you might want to choose your recipes that have the most content, and the most ingredients. Just that way you make sure you're leaving enough space for things, right? But the whole idea is we're coming in here, we're testing things out, and we're making sure that it works pretty well with our template so we know it's going to work for most pages later. Now I'm going to grab these instructions real quick, Control C. I'm going to bring them over here, and let's do Control V. Now for instructions, if I wanted it to be... Uh, first of all, I need to expand out this text box, so let's expand it out. Now we can see that that's really taking up more than I have room on the page. So all of this could be bumped up a little bit for starters. So let's grab both of these. Let's not the top box there. Let's move it up slightly on page. And then even that's not going to be enough room. So what I think I need to do then is I need to grab this whole text box. Let's try making this 10 point, maybe 11 point we can get away with. And then if we're going to do that, we might want to be consistent. So I might make this 11 point as well. And I might make this 11 point as well. That way I'm just giving myself more room here. Now I also want to have a little bit of margin on the edge. So let's drag that in. Let's drag this in. So again, just these little tweaks just to make sure we have things working pretty well in our design. Okay. Now, if you have longer recipes, you could always make, you know, adjustments on a different page. I could take this whole instructions block here uh, and I could bring all of this and slide it all the way over if I thought that was going to work better. And if I did that, I would come and I would expand this box here like that. So it's really what you think is going to work best for your setup and whatever it is you're creating. So that looks pretty good though. So that's a pretty good uh, template sort of placeholder page. This looks fine here. Again, if I am going down with my font size, I would maybe try to be consistent. And so I might come up here and take this down uh, just since I have smaller, uh, since I have less text. And if I do that, you know what? I might decide that, hey, I like this better here. Let's expand it out this way. Uh, and then let's do the same thing where we, we bring this and we expand it out that way. So again, these are all just decisions you can make along the way, but this is part of the template process because you want to make sure you have your template working pretty well. So it's going to work for most of your content. And then the final page is just a thank you page here. So let's just come put something really, thanks for checking out our recipes. Find more at and then once again, you could put your, your blog name again. And let's make all this a little bit wider. I'm trying to get it so that fits on one line here. And then again, once again, I would come in here, highlight this, and we're going to use that hyperlink option again. Uh, and just put in your URL. Because then that's going to be something that is a link. 
and that final PDF version. And of course, we don't need this at the bottom and we could put in whatever picture, but having this as a placeholder is fine. So this is the basic process. We have an extra page here, which we can get rid of. So, so this is the basic process. You're building out the pages that you might use. You're giving yourself some variety. So if you have a couple of different title options, that's fine. If you have a couple of different table of content options, that's fine. But now that we actually come to generate our book, uh, what we're going to do is have an idea of what content we're going to use. We're going to figure out what content we'll use, and then we're going to generate the pages we need from this as a template. We're going to use this as a template. So let's talk very briefly about how we use this as a template, how we're going to save it as a template, and then how we generate out the pages and create the final version of our recipe book. Now, obviously, if we knew we were only going to design one recipe book ever, we could just work through now creating all of our pages, building out, building out our book. But the reason why we're thinking in terms of a template because is because Canva becomes really powerful when you start to think about repeat content that you're going to do again in the future. And for marketing, for a lot of businesses, you're going to have social media graphics where you have similar themes or you're going to have uh, ebooks that you create uh, where you have similar themes. And so when you start to do content that's somewhat similar to something you do in the past, that's where you can really save time by having templates that you've customized that really make sense for your brand. They have your branding included. So I haven't put like logos and things in here, but you could put your logos and other things in there. There are things that you can do just to save yourself work down the road. And so that's sort of the mindset we're taking with this approach is we wanna work smart so that we put a little bit more time up front maybe, but that's gonna come back to us several times over in the future because we're gonna reuse this year over year when we're creating new content. Okay, so let's talk about saving this as a template and I'm gonna show you how you would do it if you had a pro account for anybody that's a pro user and then I'll show you back on this account how you would do it here uh, under a free account. So I'm gonna share this so I can share it with my pro account. So I'm gonna come under the share option here uh, and you see template link and you have some other options. If you click more, you can see even more options, but I'm gonna choose this template link option. And when you choose that, you have a link that you can copy and basically anybody that's signed into Canva that uses this link can then use what you've created as a template to uh, create a new design. So I'm gonna copy this here and I'll copy this and then I'm gonna go over to another browser and in this other browser, I'm going to paste in this link. So here's, here's the browser where I am logged in under my pro account. So I'll paste this in and it's saying a template was created by Greg. Uh, you can use this as a template to launch your own design. So if I check, if I click use template now, it's basically going to launch a version of this page that I created. Uh, but now I'm not working on, you know, that person's design that shared it with me. This is now my own copy. This is my own version. Okay. So as a pro user, if you went through this process of creating something that you wanted to use as a template, you can then come under the share and under the share menu, you'll see this brand template option. You do not have this option if you are a free user. This is something that just shows up on a pro account, but on a pro account, you have this brand template option. So I'll click on this and it's going to ask you, where do you want to publish this to? You can put it in any folder so I can come in here and choose a different folder. Uh, by default, it's going to show up on this brand templates folder, which it creates for you by default as a pro user. So I'll just go ahead and put it in there for now. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and publish this to the brand templates folder. So I'll quick click publish. Uh, and then it goes me, gives me another link for sharing that. But what I can do now is if I go back to my homepage now, so we're going to leave this design and now I want to find that template that I just created. And so I see it right here and it has this brand template option or this brand template badge here under recent designs. But I also could have come in under my projects tab uh, and gone to folders and gone to that brand templates folder. And there it is in here. Now, of course, I should have saved it with a better name. You want to sort of give it names that are going to make sense. It just has copy of gray, yellow, modern business magazine since that's the original template I opened. So that's not great. So if I double click on this, uh, I can actually get in there and start to type some new text. So let's call this recipe book template, give it something that's going to make sense. Uh, and now what happens as a pro user, when you create this brand template, if you click on a, that link, click on that file to open it up, it's going to ask you, do you want to edit the original? So this would be if I wanted to go back in and make some more template adjustments like we were just doing. Uh, but if we want to spawn a copy and use it as a template, that's where we're going to use this template. We're going to use this button here. And now what it's going to do is it's taking that original file. It's making a copy 
and now we're working on a copy. And the reason why this is a good workflow strategy, and we know that that works because right here it says copy of recipe book template, is it's a good strategy because the original is preserved. So if I come in here, I accidentally delete some things and make some changes. I'm not gonna use all these pages, so I'm maybe gonna throw out this page. I'm maybe gonna throw out this page. Uh, and so I'm throwing out some of these pages, but those are pages I might wanna use the next time I use this template. So it's good to have that original preserved and it's good to just work on a copy of something. Now, this is with the pro account. You do not have this uh, spawn uh, copy thing uh, the way you do the brand templates. You don't have the brand template option in the free account. So in the free account, you have to do it slightly different. So here I am back on my free account now. So on a free account, you don't have the brand template option. I can come up here. You're not gonna have this brand template option. So here's what I would do under a free account. I would just go file and let's, uh, we, could, we could rename this or we could save it as something, but let's just rename it. So let's just go I'll come up here and this is where I'm gonna call it recipe book template and we'll go ahead and click enter uh, it should save automatically but you could come in here it says all changes saved but you could click save so it's all saved now i could close out of this uh, let me just go back to the canva home page uh, so back to home and on the home page here here it is here it hasn't updated with the new template uh, there it is it just updated so this screen takes a second to update sometimes but so now we have this recipe book template uh, I cannot click on if I click on it now here's what's gonna happen it's just gonna open the file right it's not spawning a copy it's not asking me to use it as a template it's just opening it now the danger in that is we can make edits to this but if we're throwing out pages we're gonna lose that original template so later let's close it out again let's come back here this time instead of doing this if we just want to have it operate as a template and if we don't want to edit the template itself but we actually want to create the final product now what I would do is use these three dots and we're gonna choose make a copy. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna spawn a copy. Now we can click in and work on this copy. And now we're in the exact same position we were on that pro account where we used that brand template option, right? So you can get and do the same thing. It just takes that one extra step where you have to remember it's not gonna ask you, do you wanna use it as a template? You just have to go in there and you have to make a copy. Now we're working on a copy. Now we can safely throw out pages, we can make changes, and we know we have that original preserved. So this is just a good workflow when you have a piece of content that you wanna act as a template for future projects again and again and again. Now we can use this copy to build out a fi our final book here. So let's just go through that process real quick. So I'm gonna go under my dessert book folder. And the first thing I would do is just figure out which one of these I wanna use as my cover image. So I could go through and if I wanted to use this particular image as my cover image, maybe I would just drop it real quick into the different pages here, see what's gonna look best. So I'm just dropping it in didn't snap in there. Let's just try that one again. Let's just bring it just over so it snaps in. And so there we go. And so you're going to go through and decide which one of these you like, which one is working for you. And of course you can double click in and try to crop within there. You could make it bigger within the frame, things like that. Uh, but then you could pick out which page you're going to want. And then once you decide, hey, I'm going to use this title page, let's say you decide to use this title page here, then you could say, okay, I no longer need this page. I no longer need this page. Now you want to bring it, build out your interior pages and to build out this table of contents, you'll need to have done a little planning because obviously if you're going to use 12 recipes, uh, then you probably couldn't fit them all on one page here. So you would want to duplicate this page and then you could put some recipes here and some recipes here. And then once you see where they're going to fall in your book in terms of page order, you could come back and update these page orders. But just to keep it simple, I'm going to do six recipes here. So I have my titles just off screen, which I grabbed from my blog here and this document. So I'm just going to copy and paste. And so real quick, I'm just going to copy and paste in my recipe titles. And you can see when I did that, uh, most of my recipes ended up spanning two lines. And then when it went to the second line, it didn't auto space the, the lines below it. It didn't move them down. And this is just the case where uh, invariably when you do this, you're going to find sometimes that you want to go back and you want to make tweaks to your original template file so that it's going to work a little better in the future. So just an example here, I'm not going to go back to the original, but just to show you here, if I ungroup these, these were maybe too close together. Uh, so let me just come in here and I'm going to go into this text item. Let me get rid of the second line for a second. Uh, and let's come in here. And what we wanted to have happen was we wanted this, when I expanded to a second line, we wanted it to uh, 
space uh, automatically, which if you group it again, it should happen. So I'm just going to try this again. So if I come in here now and I hit enter, see now it's working. Now it's automatically expanding to that second line. So I might want to go back to my original template and just make sure I have it working so that I can have something where it's going to auto space and I don't have to do that spacing every time. Uh, but then the spacing between this element and the block below could get thrown off. So there's these little problems that you will have to solve and it's just about finding what is the best workflow, what's going to save you the most time. But for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in, I'm going to select all of these uh, let's see if I can ungroup all these at once. I think I can. So ungroup. And then what I would have to do is just come in here and bump this down. Come in here and bump this down. Of course, I'm starting to get things close together. So I'm just going to have to bump things down a little bit. Uh, and so this is taking a little bit of time. So this is probably just annoying it enough that I would want to go back and figure out a way to improve my uh, sort of my template a little bit. Uh, so that I don't have to do this every time. But I'll real quick group these back together. I'll real quick group this. So now I'm just grouping these sets back together. And the reason why I'm grouping these sets back together is because then I can space them on the page in relation to each other. So I'll do group there. Uh, so those are already grouped. So now if I select all of these now, I could just come under position, arrange, and make sure that vertically there's an equal amount of space between them. And so then that is looking pretty good, okay? So again, it's going to save you time, but you may have to tweak your template, your original template, just to optimize it and make sure you're in the best position to save the most time going forward, the most possible time that you can. So then I would also just want to come through and make sure I update these images here. So this one is in there and then I would grab a couple other that are part of this here. So this is that pie that gets mentioned. So I'll throw that down here. Here is my shortbread. So I would put that in here. Again, I can tweak these, move them around as needed. And then I'm getting into the interior of my pages here, interior pages. And I might actually go to this view, this grid view now, uh, because what I have here is my, I have my cover page. I have my table of contents page. I'm not going to need a second table of contents page, so I will make sure that I delete this page. Uh, but now for each of these, I'm going to have six recipes. So I'm going to have this page six time, times and this page six times. So what I might do now is just come in here and duplicate page, which you see the keyboard shortcut for that is Control D. So I could just hit Control D. That's three, four, five, six. I could do the same thing for this. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then of course I know that I'm going to have to have this page alternating so I'll just drag another one drag another one drag another one not getting these to cooperate here let's try this again got to make sure you have that blue line let's drag this one boom and I'm just trying to make sure that I get alternating pages here so that I have the alternating page so let's see have I done it let's see one two one two one two one no this needs to swap with this page there we go one two one and one more time one so now one two one two one two one two one two one two okay so now we have the exact page order we want uh, and so now I could start to drop in the individual recipes of these pages. So let me go back here to the uh, full grid view. So you see we're using this template to build out the content we're going to need in our full book. So now this first one, if it was going to be that, we would do that. So maybe I'll do the images first so those images are good. Uh, and then this one here, actually let me go all the way back here. Uh, and so... Just, let me just remind myself. So here we have ice cream pie. And so here's the second page for that. Then this next page here, this one would maybe be uh, our next version. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy and paste the different titles in here. So we got that. And then I'll go to my next recipe. And so I'll come back over and I'll grab my next recipe title. Control A, Control V. So again, I'm using keyboard shortcuts just for selecting all the text and for pasting. Uh, and then if you have something like this here, where this I want to stay on one line, I might actually come in here and just nudge it down a little bit. And even though that's slightly different size, I might be okay with that. You have to make these little decisions. Uh, so then let me get out my next recipe. Control C, Control A, Control V. Uh, so here we go. Control A, Control V. Go to my next recipe title. 
This is the Hershey bar pie. Control A, Control V. So again, just selecting everything with Control A, Control V to paste. Um, and then find my final recipe here. It should be the last one. So this is the Heath bar cake. Control C, Control A, Control V. Control A, Control V. Uh, so that should be all of my recipes in there. And so now I have the recipe titles and now I can use those recipe titles as my guide for dropping in images. So this first one has the correct images. These other ones I have to come in here and update these images. So let me move that up a little bit. Let's come down to the next image and drop that in. Here's the peanut butter cupcakes. So that is this image. And again, you probably have more images than I have in here, but just for the example here, I'm keeping this pretty simple, just with one image that I'm using for both of these frames here. Uh, shortbread, so boom, bringing that one down so it looks a little bit better. But so you can see, once you actually have this template set up, then you can really quickly come in here, especially when you're updating these images, you can update things really quickly and you can have something looking really good without doing a lot of work. So final one here, bring that down. And again, what I'm doing to bring these down is I'm just double clicking to get in the frame and then I can crop within the frame. Okay, so just like that. And then the, the last step would be just like I did uh, in the uh, building of the template, I would come in here just like I did for the original recipe, uh, this recipe here, the way you saw me bring in the ingredients, copy in the ingredients, copy in the instructions. That's what I would do for these final pages. And then I would just come to this uh, final page here and I would build out whatever kind of thank you note. I probably won't have to change this at all, but maybe I'll put another image in here. Uh, find an image that makes sense. One that's actually in the recipe book. So maybe that one there. Uh, and then very quickly, you can build out a recipe book like this. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do the content on these final pages, pasting in the recipe and instructions. But what I will do now is show you a couple final versions that I have created, recipe books that I've done in the past. I'll share a couple in the links below that you can use, but then also from this video, I really hope you've learned this process and you'll be comfortable now building out your own templates for not just recipe books, but pretty much any ebook you want to create. Okay, so just to show you a couple final examples, here are a few books that I created completely. Uh, so I'm within Canva here. So if you want to preview within Canva, a good way to do it, if you want to see full screen, is to come up here, come under present, and I'm going to go present full screen and go ahead and click present. And then I can use my arrow keys just to go through my pages. So you can see the way this is a fully built out recipe book. And I did this using the same method uh, that we discussed in this tutorial. So you start and you create that initial template and then from the template, you can very easily create something like this. Let me just look at another one real quick. I have another one open here. This is a dessert book here. So let me just bring this one up and I'll go ahead and do the same thing. I'll go full screen here, present, present, and we'll just take a quick look here. Uh, and on these pages here, I didn't mention before, but you can actually link from the table of contents if you wanted this to be sort of a hyperlink to a actual page within your document. And I'll show you that in the final PDF in a minute, because right now we're looking within Canva. Uh, so you can see this one, I actually didn't fill this one out completely. It's got a little bit in here. So this is an incomplete one, but the pre prior one was complete. Uh, but you can see you build them out. And then here's an example of a final PDF. So what we would do with like this recipe book here, this is what we have in Canva. Then you would come under the share menu, you would come download. And then under your options here, what you wanna do is choose PDF standard. That's gonna be the best if it's just like a web file that you're gonna share. Now, obviously if you're creating something for print, then you would use this PDF for print and you're gonna get a higher quality file for print. But if you do do something for print, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to what printer you're using, uh, what those printing specs are. And then that's when you would wanna be a little careful with things that come to the edge and understand for most print services, you're gonna have that print bleed where they trim the edges, uh, edges of your pages. And so you'd have to be a little bit more careful with content that's close to edge, the edge of your page. And you actually could come up here under file and view settings under this menu here, you could show print bleed, and that's gonna give you a little margin at the edge of the page. And you have to wear that, and be aware that anything's in your mar that margin there is probably gonna be the portion of your design that's gonna get trimmed off during that final print. So you just wanna have that be a safe area and basically keep that clean and don't have anything in that margin 
or don't have anything that you you know, want to keep in your final design. Uh, but normally a lot of times I think you can just create these as PDF giveaways. And then here's an example of what a final PDF is going to look. This is an actual PDF document right here. So again, this is just a simple uh, dessert book one here. And this is one where I actually went in and I made sure I filled out all the content. So all this content is filled out. And then at the bottom of the footer of this particular book, I went ahead and I made this a hyperlink. So if I click on this here, you can see that it's now navigating to uh, the actual recipe on the website. So again, this is a way to drive traffic back to your site. Uh, now, just to go back to this again, I did not make the table of contents a link here, but you could do that within Canva. So I'll just show you that real quick. If you're within Canva here and you wanted to have uh, this number or this text here, uh, link to an actual page in your document. You could highlight it, so I'll highlight the whole thing. You have this hyperlink option. Instead of entering the link here, you could actually just come down and choose a page in your document. So you'd figure out what recipe page it is, you go ahead and do that, and then it's gonna link to that page when you have that final PDF, okay? So these are all strategies for creating your own recipe books within Canva, super easy to do. And again, you could use this same style for creating pretty much any ebook you want. And especially when you're doing repetitive tasks in the future, you wanna build out something that you're gonna be able to use again and again, that's gonna save you a time. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop them below. I hope this was helpful to you. And I will also, in the description for this video below, I'm gonna put some links to some templates that I have, so you can go ahead and spawn your own copies if you wanna have some templates that I've created out if you do have needs for this sort of recipe book thing. So let me just show you a few that I've created. These are ones I can link to you uh, below. So here's just uh, the same idea of what we did in this example. Uh, here's another one, slightly different styling, slightly different fonts used. Again, here's another one. Again, here's another one. So I will just link a few of these below so you can have some of these uh, and go ahead and spawn them and make them your own and make use of them. And again, thanks so much for watching. If it was helpful, you can go ahead and hit subscribe below so you can follow this channel and get other Canva tutorials uh, to help you on your Canva journey. Thanks again. And